Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Ray Torn, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Wards and Wardens. So, the first thing we need to do in today's episode is we need to equip this ornate ribbon here. Now, the game used to do this automatically if you had open slots. I don't know if they changed that intentionally or if it's a bug. But yeah, clearly it's not equipping them. And so we'll get that equipped and get those bonuses, particularly to the seduction. Uh, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get this uh, accolade created with a uh, Gilem. Last episode, I asked you guys which of these traits we should get, and I saw all of them, basically all three of the, the main ones here would be good choices. So besieger, tactician, or valiant. And so I think we're going to go with the valiant for the secondary and leave besieger for the first one. That one's always helpful. Sieges, you know, they take a long time in the game and uh, the majority of wars is often you doing the sieges. So I think this is pretty much always useful to have. And I asked for names and I had a couple of people who said they're fine with the iron knight. And yeah, that's, that's a fine name. So for particularly for a besieger. So yeah, let's go ahead and do this though. I didn't realize we did not have the prestige, so we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait until after we get the that little bit of prestige. It shouldn't take too long. Now, remember, we are currently journeying to pay homage to the king. So this is a common travel event allowing you to recruit this just random wandering character. He's all right as a, as a leader. He's not too bad. But he's not great as a knight because he's a craven. And he's known as the craven as well. I don't know if we put our... Our life on the line here. We're not really brave or anything like that, but maybe we tell uh, Balder to help him out. We would get uh, prestige if we hit that 45% chance, which is what we need, and we actually did succeed at that. All right, excellent. Also, we have the opportunity here to hire this physician. So let's go and take a look and see which one would be the best option. Well, clearly he has the physician trait as well as herbalist, so he would be better. And so we're going to pay him the extra money so that we have a better court physician. And then we might want to go ahead and take a look if we want to appoint him as the court tutor as well, since remember our lover who died was also the court tutor. Yeah, yeah, we'll hire him for that. Generally, the physician is the best option uh, for your court tutor due to their, their higher learning. Uh, so we can now get that knight position. We got that little batch of prestige there. So let's go ahead and get this appointed here, and we want to make him valiant. Because that does get that army damage. And, uh, you know, Tactician would be fine too. Particularly for our character, since we're doing the martial lifestyle, so that experience gain would be helpful. Honestly, the secondary attribute doesn't matter that much because it generally almost always changes. Rarely do you find somebody uh, who will succeed them and can fit both of those positions there. Uh, so yeah, let's go and create this accolade as the Iron Knight. Yeah, both of those are, are valid options for the secondary. Alright, so we now have our first Knight Accolade here. And we have also arrived to the capital of the Holy Roman Empire, where we gained 600 diplomacy and lifestyle experience points. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, we're paying uh, homage. I suppose we'll read this since it's the first time we've done it in this series. Servants usher me into Kaiser Heinrich the Force's uh, the Force Great Hall in Klingenberg, where he sits his throne waiting to hear my pledge. I kneel at the feet of my lord and pledge the many oaths of homage as his scribes record the event. My tenants then follow, presenting my rich gifts to the Kaiser before the assembled court. Heinrich bids me to rise and confirms his satisfaction, along with my rights to the lands I rule in his stead. So the price of fealty. So our dynasty gains renown, one of the benefits of doing this. And we'll also increase opinion with our, our friend here, our legion friend. And we get all that prestige, which we're quite short on prestige, so quite helpful. And apparently our court position has improved his trait as well. All right, so another frequent, uh, you know, travel event here. So we could have our future red. We'll lose some stress as well as some gold. We definitely need to get rid of this high amount of stress we have. I was not to see what our omen would be. Uh, or we could recruit this character, and he's actually pretty good with that 22 learning. And yeah, he's pretty solid, though. He's also old, so we probably wouldn't be around for very long. Yeah, we'll get our future told. There's nothing that would say our character would or wouldn't do this. And uh, apparently we had good omens. Excellent. And we reduced that stress. And we've already arrived back home. All right. Fantastic. Uh, our, our wife is not our regent in this particular case. Now our sons are in that regency position. 
Uh, so the yeah, next time we get it, we'll take a look at it. But I think they're both uh, ones in the first position, the other ones in the second, uh, which makes sense that they would be the ones that uh, would serve as our regent. So we might want to take a look and see if there's any potential successors out there. So we'll send off and see. That also get us another knight, which is a decision we could be taking here to invite knights. Uh, I also want to develop the capital, as I said last episode, but we have got to get rid of the stress first, which is a, a key problem for us. So I think what we're going to do is actually go ahead and do an activity here. Oh, we got a, a legacy as well. All right, so we'll have to take a look at that. But we're going to go ahead and throw a feast, guys. We've done a hunt already. And yeah, I think our character would really like a feast. And you never know, we might find somebody to romance on that feast. So yeah, let's go ahead and do our first feast here. Just in the capital, probably the best location as well. And so our goal here will be recreation. You could do seduce. But I don't know that we actually have any options here. Oh, we could seduce these duchesses. That would be coming to the feast. And just from the seduction, you might lose stress, but she's known as the repulsive. So I don't know if we'd want to seduce her with that nickname. And we had said we were going to romance our wife, so why not do that here in the feast? Hopefully we'll lose some stress. Generally, you always lose stress from feast. Uh, so as far as an honorary guest, I don't know that we're going to invite anybody. Oh, maybe uh, Duke William. Why not? Yeah, sure. We'll invite Duke William to come. He's our, one of our friends, and we also just saw the Emperor not that long ago when we paid homage to him. So yeah, we'll invite Duke William, which Duke William is independent, by the way. Apparently this is what happens when he doesn't get control of England, uh, when Norway gets it. Uh, it's supposed to be the most rarest uh, thing, and I've never seen that happen before either, where you know England is actually part of Norway, as we had seen. I think that was the last episode. So yeah, we'll invite him. Now, as far as how much we're going to be spending... I think we're just going to do the the medium level here for the dish complexity for the number of courses. I think we might actually boost it a bit more for the higher opinion. So yeah, we'll spend a bit more on this. Of course, we don't have to travel since it's in our, our capital. So yeah, let's go ahead and start our feast up. We'll get uh, the 35 prestige here. And uh, we should see some events there for the or the romancing, which, by the way, before I forget, we need to boost the opinion of some characters, make sure that we're making use of our uh, our personal scheme. And we actually have a fashion that could become a problem here, and you notice that Count Albert, he's not very committed to this. If we just increased his opinion, he would leave the fashion. Now, when I looked at this earlier, it was like 92%, now it's 77%, so he's they're, they're not as powerful. Uh, but yeah, they could definitely send an ultimatum if they just get a little bit more power. So let's go ahead and sway this guy and get him out of that faction. I'd prefer to not have to fight this rebellion if we can avoid it. Of course, fighting the rebellion does allow us to take take their titles, so there are some benefits to doing so. So I think the one that fits the most for our current character would be Kin. And it would be an interesting route to go if we were to continue down it. And I don't think we've ever done this one on any of our... CK3 playthroughs. We've done most of these other ones. Yeah, almost all of them. Maybe not this one. But I think all the other ones we've at least gone down a couple. A couple of them. I don't think we've ever went down this route. So yeah, let's go with this one. So Bounteous Loins. Fertility is going to be increased and Attraction Opinion is going to be up. Obviously, definitely something that uh, Gerard would be interested in getting. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're hosting this feast here. And hopefully we'll be able to reduce our stress from it while also maybe romancing our, or seducing our new wife. Uh, we were able to find an accolade successor, and he's actually pretty decent. Generally, when you find one, they're not all that great. So that's surprising, because uh, yeah, usually they're always kind of terrible. Uh, so let's go and appoint him. And that also means we're going to have another knight as well, who's pretty good. So we've already improved our little crop of knights now. So let's just see who all we've got. We have three, excuse me, four, that are 15 or above. So not bad. Now we still have some pretty cruddy knights. Also, uh, both of our sons are knights for us. Of course, one of them is uh, one of our best knights. 
is our second son. But yeah, even our uh, <laughs> not very good knight, eldest son, is serving for us because we do have those increased knights. And uh, also, it looks like we got this this bonus here for the holding taxes. And that marriage just happened as well. Is this the one that we had uh, arranged for him? Was she not old enough at the time? Yeah, maybe that's what was going on. Maybe it was just a, a betrothal. But they're married now. Alright, and we have kicked up on the feast here. Let's see what the first event we get. Alright, so just a, a typical uh, event that we often get. And we've learned of the secret for this Prince Bishop. He attempted to murder somebody. And disaster strikes. So again, another typical event here. And do we want to spend the money to get the prestige bonus here? Or do you want to have everybody pitch in? I feel like as a diligent character, you make the argument that we'd want to, to pay for it ourselves. Yeah, so let's go and do that. It's kind of our job here, uh, being the one that's holding the feast. I can't believe we actually invited Duke Gottfried. I assume it's because we had maybe a neighboring ruler selected or fellow vassals. Yeah. Could have, of course, took this opportunity to, to assassinate him. Then his daughter, who's just recently born. Oh, well, this is a family of uh, hunchbacks here. Uh, but yeah, she would have taken over. Probably would have caused all kinds of problems for the realm. We yeah, have the high table breaks here. And so we end up getting seated next to Count Ulrich, the Craven, and have a good time. Uh, Count Ugo does not, though. He's not happy about this. But do Gottfried actually display grace and humility among his lusters? I don't know. Maybe he's not a monster. I don't know. We have a new friend, though. As far as where he rules, this is one county over here. In the south, can't really see that, but yeah, it's down here. Alright, so next event looks like it's involving Duke Gottfried and Count Ugo. So they don't like each other. So we already saw that a difference of opinion there. And so now they're in a fight. So we can either throw Ugo out to cool off, potentially form a rivalry with him, or restrain Gottfried until things calm down, uh, which would probably be what we'd do. Anybody who has problems with Gottfried is a friend of ours. You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend and all. Yeah, so let's uh, restrain Gottfried. Of course we'd do that. Even though we don't really have any problems with him, it was his father. It looks like the rivalry has gone down to the next generation. And uh, looks like we improved opinion with our wife, but I don't think we actually seduced her. We can do our toast now to Duke William, which of course we will. And that's going to result in him getting more prestige and getting that highly esteemed. And also the increased opinion. Alright, so we did reduce our stress by a little bit. Not as much as I would have liked. But we got the eager, re uh, eager reveler trait, increasing intrigue and courtly vassal opinion. And of course we also got this modifier in our capital, increasing the development growth. Now we're not actually you know, working on development right now since of course we're still trying to convert the capital that's five years left of uh what was 10 years a 10 year uh conversion and it looks like our spouse's piety has impressed the king bishop so pope alexander is happier with us so it seems our son and our cousin countess sophia are close and so yeah we're gonna be happy to see such friendship grow and help it bloom and a faction's been created against the Kaiser by Count Ugo. That's not the same Count Ugo, I don't think, though, is it? Yeah, yeah, it actually is the same Count Ugo. Okay, so that's a faction, uh, Liberty faction. Alright, so as far as trying to sway him, we could try and uh, put our diplomatic skills to the test and improve it by more. It's a 72% chance of success, so why not? We'll try it out, and he appreciates the effort. So we boosted his opinion by more, and he should now leave the faction. Yeah, he's no longer in a faction. He didn't need much urging there to leave it. We just need a little bit of opinion, but you see we boosted it by a consider uh, considerable amount. So we don't need to do that anymore. Uh, but what I would like to do next is probably boost the Spy Master. It's not as bad as it was, but we could sway it a little bit more. Not a high chance of success here, but why not? Uh, we've also been invited to a hunt. Let's see where this is. It's only 43 days away. 
So we'd be heading south. South of uh, Sfabia. Uh, yeah, sure, we still are quite stressed out. So why not let somebody else pay for this? Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and attend this. And you know, we have a uh, regent that we can trust with our son. I'm pretty sure he's not self-interested, he's a loyal one. And so yeah, we can feel confident that he's not going to do anything crazy. Yeah, he's selfless. And what do we have him sent to? Just making sure. It looks like his promote authority. Let's go to Phil Coffers. We can always use a bit more money. And uh, actually, let's go ahead and spend some money. I wanted to create some light horsemen. I know we still need to build up these other ones, but we got room for one more man at arms. So it's always nice to get the additional bonuses there. And uh, we do have locations to put them. So let's go ahead and place them. Where would we get the best bonus here? All right, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just place them over here. We will wait to increase his size any further, though. We, we are doing all right on money, though. All right, so we're at the hunt. I wanted to change... You know what? We can actually do recreation. And yeah, because we're, we're looking to decrease our, our stress here. So we're going to keep it on recreation. This is about relaxing, so we don't need to be successful on this hunt. Uh, our leash just entered a regency... And what's interesting that we're actually second, or we were in second in line. Looks like it's changed up a little bit. Now we're third in line. Because Duke Otto has been pushed out. He was the previous regent, and Ordolf has taken over. So now we're in third place here. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could be the regent, and we would be a loyal one. Looks like we got some good notifications here. Beatrix is going to get a better education from our spouse, and our court physician continues to improve his skills. And our son has gotten married as well. Okay, so remember we arranged this before. This is uh, the Normandy daughter. And so she's now old enough to marry. And, oh no. What happened? Dietrich just died. I wonder how. He just got married. He drowned. How terrible. Alright, so we just lost our eldest son absolutely devastating and yeah this is going to put us at critical stress levels not surprising at all uh, our character would be quite upset about this yeah he just drowned after just getting married how unfortunate hmm so that'll also end the alliance with duke william and uh now our second son gerard is going to be taking over as our heir and as our regent wow how unexpected so I remember we're going to be playing as a zealous, wrathful, just character. It would have been a very interesting character to play as, but now we'll be playing his brother, who's honest, trusting, and brave. So also going to be an interesting character, I think. Uh, but yeah, he's a, a martial-minded, so we'll be doing two martial-minded characters back-to-back, -back, which is unfortunate, but uh, you know we did start this character pretty late in life. He's also an unyielding defender and an aggressive attacker. That's absolutely fantastic. So hopefully we keep him alive because uh, yeah, otherwise we'll be playing as, as Beatrix here. And she's currently brave and wrathful. So let's see what happens with her. Remember, she's going down with the intrigue education. But we're going to want to make sure that uh, whoever we arrange for her to marry. Let me just see here. Do we have a... We do have a spouse here. Hmm. We can always break that patrol, though. She's not very old right now. Because I don't think... Either of them have had children yet. Yeah, this is kind of a problem. Because if she inherits, well, then we'll be in a, a rough position where we could lose everything. So, yeah, he, he didn't die from being a knight. He died from drowning. So, life has never been easy, but it feels like the loss of my son, Dietrich, has pushed me over the edge. I still remember him as a baby, so tiny, so fragile, despite that he survived growing up, growing older until now, when he suddenly stopped. Had so many hopes for his future, so many things I wish to see, which now can never come to pass. Just devastating, man. Uh, so is life without him even worth it? So we become quite depressed. Lose some stress here. Could instead say, what is the point in eating when the hole is in my heart? So yeah, we'll just stop eating. And that'll cause some problems here, as you'd expect. Or I must press on. It is what he would have wanted. We'll get the frozen grief. And a much smaller 
reduction in stress. I guess this one isn't a very large reduction in stress either. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like with a diligent character, you got to push on, right? And then you get that nasty frozen grief modifier, decreasing diplomacy, uh, getting a health penalty. But yeah, I kind of feel like that's what we would likely do here. So let's go with that. We did reduce the stress level, but uh, yeah, honestly, not a good situation here. We're losing our eldest son at such a young age, right after getting married. Yeah, very sad. Oh, but that hunt did help reduce the stress of the event. And our knight has entered King Philip's recital contest. Okay, I didn't know that there was a contest. Probably a notification up here, and we just missed it. Yeah, looks like there's a... I mean, we wouldn't have wanted to go to it right now anyway, but yeah, there's a tournament in France. And so another frequent travel event here. And I feel like in this particular situation, we would just move on. Our character just doesn't even care. Because, yeah, we're just so devastated and depressed and just trying to push through as best as we can. So, we've got that money. So, we could do another activity here. We also just got a martial perk, so let's go and get the next level. Uh, we'll, we'll get the Promising Prospects. That'll increase the chance of marriage acceptance here. But, yeah, I'm worried about our, our line now. Yeah, because we have some serious issues. Uh, we did complete that sway attempt. Let's go ahead and stop the next one. And I think we're just in grief right now. And I don't think we'd sway anybody or seduce anybody. I think we just need a little bit of time to recover from this from this loss. Yeah, we're just not in a good position at the moment. But hopefully our... Oh, wow. Hit us, just, just, you know, kicking us while we're down. William just died too. He died from a seizure. So our good friend William's dead. And so his son has taken over. And you notice they're not independent anymore. Also, England is not part of Norway anymore either. Though it does have a Norwegian uh, queen here. They are not part of Norway any longer. Okay, very interesting developments here. Uh, but yeah, it looks like Normandy is back underneath the King of France. Probably accepted that uh, Robert did. Okay, so a new Duke of Normandy. And uh, his sister is, of course, married. Oh, I guess she isn't, huh? That's right. Because uh, I was thinking it was our, our second son, but yeah, she was married to our eldest. And it's our uh, our second son is, is married instead to the Duke Otto II of Bavaria's daughter. So hopefully they have children soon. Because, yeah, we have some issues with the line here. Let me just take a look at the situation, make sure, like, uh, there wouldn't be any issues, uh, traits or anything like that might uh, result in them not having children. Yeah, they should be able to, to have some children here. And, again, it's the end of our line here, so there's nobody else. And the favorite lady was destroyed. That one doesn't stick around very long. An event here about a strange noise. I arrived back in my castle after a long, lonely walk. Another year passed, another year older. I was born this day 57 years ago. The older I get, the more I cherish the relationships I've cultivated over the years. So it saddens me that I've not heard from my wife, Candida, or any of my friends today. I trudge along to my chambers, loneliness impeding my lazy feet, while I hear a cling and hushed whispers from down the hallway. So what could it be at this hour? Uh, it does seem like Beatrix is going to get an education here. Our wife keeps on improving her education. And it's the happy birthday event. What a surprise. All my nearest and dearest friends have come together to wish me well as I begin this next year of life. There's even an entire table laden with entrements. Or entrements. I'm not sure if that's pronounced properly. I think that's like uh, desserts or something like that. My favorite. Here I was thinking that everyone had forgotten about me. I cannot believe that Candida went to all this trouble of arranging this in secret. I had not a clue such a thoughtful surprise was being planned at all. My friend Heinrich approaches me struggling to carry three beautifully wrapped packages. Ever the trickster, he says, I have three gifts for you to, uh, here for you to choose. One shall be yours, but which shall it be? So you can take the largest one, the medium sized one, but good things come in small packages. 
Well, we like things in moderation, so good things come in small packages, I think. And we gotta find Brooch. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that equipped. I guess we'll put it on this one here. That increases our fertility, as well as our prestige gain. Man, I guess we need to have another child with our young wife here. And I suppose we'll give it... When did our son die? Just take a look here. I feel like it's been a year. It's an appropriate amount of time of mourning here. And we're never going to move on. If we don't at least make an attempt here. And so let's try and move on by seducing our wife. Since we are a, a lustful character. So we'll see if this is a, a successful attempt. Should be. It's a 95% chance of success. And we can purchase something for her. So we can get a, a tapestry featuring, featuring her dynasty. A pure red horse. Her dynasty, remember, is not the most renowned one. Uh, she doesn't have any family, really. She is a noble woman, but nobody's ever heard of her. Uh, a purebred horse would be most appreciated, or a teller to dress her to perfection. So it's also based off of, you know, her traits here. I don't think that any of them would uh, indicate that any of these would be one she'd like more. She's calm. Maybe she doesn't want to run a horse. We'll just go with the address, I suppose. And it looks like she liked it. Excellent. Increasing our chances of success there. And also, the Kaiser has bestowed royal favor on us. And it looks like we just got our wife pregnant. She really liked that gift, apparently. Uh, there's a hunt that we can attend. And this is Ugo's hunt as well. It is quite far away. How long would it take for us to get there? Four months. We were uh, kind of building up a little bit of a friendship here with him. So, maybe we'd go. Get out there, do a bit of traveling. Why not? We still have a lot of stress, guys. So let's go and accept it. It says we might not arrive in time, so we don't have much time to get there. We'd have to, like, speed it up, basically. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't cost that much more money if we want to, like, hire mercenary guards to increase the speed. See, so, yeah, I guess we'll do that. Let's see if that's fast enough. That's not even fast enough. Okay. So I suppose there's no way for us to speed this up enough. So we won't build attendance. It is kind of a, a distance anyway. And we didn't act uh, react to it quick enough, I think. Right, lessons from the past. Though I will surely see many battlefields before I meet my maker, my library holds the tales of war from a hundred lifetimes. I've recently acquired a tome on the Great Battle of Tours, as well as a time-worn scroll written, written in some ancient language. Who knows what forgotten secrets it holds? So we can read the newer tome, but we're diligent, so we want to, to try something challenging here. Uh, that'd give you that one plus marshal. Yeah, let's uh, really throw ourselves into something. It's a uh, learning challenge, so not a high chance of success here. But I think it is what our character would likely do here. So even with the help of a dusty glossary, the scroll is reluctant to share its secrets. But I press on. As the night progresses, the most incredible story unfolds before me. Uh, so this is the story of Thermopylae, of course. We won't read through that. But we can study the battle. Gives us some very nice bonuses for 20 years. Or focus on the translation process. Yeah, I feel like uh, studying the battle would make a lot of sense as a military guy. And those are some really nice bonuses as well. And it looks like our liege just declared war on Matilda, the drunkard of Tuscany. Okay, interesting. Uh, also, we've been offered... The position of spy master. A little bit surprising, not really the position we're best at. I'm surprised we haven't got a position yet, considering the fact that, you know, we're probably the most powerful, or maybe second most powerful duke in the realm at this point. Also, it looks like our rival up here is having some problems maintaining control of his territory. But yeah, we're not great at intrigue, and uh, while it does give you some nice bonuses, what we really want is to be 
Arlesia's marshal. Let me see who's currently the marshal, because you never know. There could be a chance that he replaces him. I mean, he's pretty good. I think he's even better than we are. I see. He's got a really good group of guys here, doesn't he? Yeah, I guess we'll take the spy master position. Because, yeah, I don't think we'll be getting this one anytime soon. It's better to have a position than none. Uh, so, yeah, we'll take the, the spy master. And it gives you some nice bonuses. You know, the, the big reason why you want a marshal, of course, because it gives you that uh, monthly experience lifestyle gain for, you know, the, the marshal one, the one that we're currently going down. But you get some other good stuff, too. Hostile scheme powers up, scheme success chance, uh, and then the natural dread, because obviously we're the spy master of the realm here, so that would give you some nice uh, dread bonuses. And so that'll be that'll be helpful. He's no longer bestowing royal favor. I think he was just doing that because we were not on his council. Uh, we got a dance event here, a part of our seduction for our wife. I'm attending the dance, not simply because I'm the lord of the castle, but because I want to see Duchess Candida there. She looks resplendent, and when we finally have a moment uh, to ourselves, I offer my suggestion. So we say, join me in the circle for the next dance, my lady? A walk on the garden away from all this? Or should I provide you with some more food? Or have you seen how these people dance? So that's her malicious side. Greedy, thoughtful, or playful? Hmm. I mean, she's not really any of those, is she? Now, as far as ourselves, yeah, I mean, we're not really, we're not really any of those things either. I guess we can go with their, her playful sign and have a dance here. She's calm. Yeah, it looks like she, uh, enjoyed it. Had a good time. We got smoldering chemistry. And our strategy was rejected. I'm sitting on a strategy meeting with Kaiser Heinrich and Duke uh, Radislav discussing our plans for the ongoing war. Unfortunately, the Kaiser d is dismissive of my ideas, instead favoring the ones proposed by Radislav. Now we're going to go, go ahead and use them to shape our strategic policy for the ongoing war. All right, so time will tell. So it looks like we, uh, we were advocating for defense, which makes sense because we're a defensive-minded guy here, but he decided to go with the improved offense. But we get that bonus too. So that's nice. I don't think we're actually leading troops though. I mean, we could be. I don't think so though. I don't think he's uh, appointed us as that. Although, I don't know. We are a good leader. But yeah, I assume we're just helping out in the capital. Trying to find uh, schemes, maybe. Alright, so he's continuing dealing with faction, factional issues during this conflict. And we had a daughter. Okay. Uh, so let's name her. Who will we name her after? I almost feel like she wouldn't know, right? <laughs> she wouldn't know. I feel like we should name her. I don't remember her name, so I have to actually look in her memories here. I feel like we would name her after our lover who died. And that's that's not her. It's uh, Amalberga. Yeah, we're going to name her after Amal Verga. She, she doesn't. Our wife has no idea. This is well before her time. So there we go. She's none the wiser. All right, so let's see if there's anything here that we might need to be aware of. Apparently, we don't have all our powerful vassals on the council. Just might want to take a look at that. What happened to that title uh, that her son had? Did his brother inherit it? He did. So he got both of those. Uh, so now he's really in the two separate counties here. Alright, so I mean, it makes sense as, you know, now the new heir. Uh, they still haven't had any children yet, unfortunately. And remember, this does not fix the inheritance issue. Because if uh, our son died without having any children, the Princess of Fashion would be the heir, who's currently in a betrothal with him, and that is not matrilineal, so they'll be of his dynasty. So still some serious issues there, guys. Servants have all been sent away, and her bed has been decorated with seashells. As Duchess Candida enters our chamber, she smiles lustfully and joins me without any hesitation. With the help of hands, mouths, and limbs, we reaffirm, reaffirm the devotion we swore before God, perhaps in a more carnal fashion than intended. 
All right, so we can say, as we are united in marriage, we are now united in heart. She becomes our lover. Or you say the bonds of marriage are enough. Yeah, sure, we can make her our lover in addition to our wife here. And she's pregnant again. So it was a very fruitful evening. Although that was two months ago. So apparently it was the previous evening that we got her pregnant. And uh, Duke Godfrey did lose his, his war there. That was a liberty conflict. And our liege defeated Duchess Matilda by arresting her, imprisoning her. So I'm not entirely sure what that war was over. I didn't uh, I didn't look, but there's a a hunt here that Count Drogo is doing. Only 38 days. He has invited us, so uh, could attend that. There's also another one here, Count Conrad. So I actually got these two mixed up. This one's over here. I don't know if we go to Conrad. I just assume he would try and kill us because <laughs> he's leading a faction right now. I don't know. We might not be able to get to that one in time. We can take a look if we could speed it up enough to be able to arrive. Nah, we're just short. That doesn't really improve it that much, honestly. So yeah, we'll go to Count Drogo's. Again, still trying to reduce uh, the stress here. Still very stressed out. We haven't gotten over everything that's happened over the last several days. And uh, it's another silly event here. We'll just go with the good omen. All right, so we've arrived at the hunt and we're just doing the recreation. Just trying to reduce our stress here. Just trying to have a good time. So as a, a hunter, and a diligent character. I think we'd go with this option. Just don't get back on his horse. We need to get this hunt done. Hopefully be successful here. And it looks like uh, we were. Count Drogo. Got the kill. We got some prestige there. And of course we'll... Oh, also we got that trait. Nice. I got some hunter experience. Okay. I mean, obviously we already had the hunter trait. But I was thinking we had gotten to the next level there. We are not even remotely close. We have 10 experience in, in that, and uh, 13 and the lower one, the Valkyrie. We had another daughter, unfortunately. All right, so nothing but daughters here. As far as her name, let me see, maybe after our mother? Oh, no, that's that's a difficult name. We'll just name him after, after our wife. So she'll be Candida. So we got the Metal Man travel events. Yeah, we're not reading all these because these are so frequent. We get them so many times. I don't think we'd leave him to his fate. He's not very good as a knight. We don't need more commanders, so we'll just do the consider the armor gone for a price. Get that 30 gold here. And unfortunately, we got a penalty here in our capital due to our crappy steward. So that's a shame. Uh, we did get another martial work though, so moving through the, the perk tree. We got the loyalty and respect, increasing spouse opinion, and skills from spouse counselor tasks. That's gonna be nice. That'll give us some nice boost there. And so I think we we're getting plus 11 from the uh, assist ruler. Now we're getting 18 points. Maybe we we're getting more than that before. That seems like a huge jump for just 25%. So yeah, maybe we we're getting more, I can't recall. But uh, yeah, this is just fantastic. Bonuses here, guys. Very, very nice. So, yeah, it turned out that we picked a very good good spouse. We we uh, picked her because she was beautiful. But it just turns out she's uh, serving us well in, in a variety of different different ways here. And including doing her duty as, as uh, the wife of a, a duke. And uh, we died while she was pregnant. Okay, so unfortunate here. I didn't even know we were close to death. But yes, we have lost our first character, Duke Gerard the First. As now we'll be playing as Duke Gerard the Second. Let's go ahead and read this. So Duke Gerard the First of Upper Lorraine has found peace in Christ's embrace at sixty years of age. He died of old age. A keen and dedicated hunter, he loved to spend entire weeks in the wilderness looking for the most elusive game. Duke Gerard ascends to the throne. A formidable duelist, many expect him to excel in tournaments and personal combat alike. Alright, so we played for 14 years total here. 
had distinguished fame, dutiful devotion. Almost finished that second perk tree, but weren't able to complete it. Had the two offensive wars and the one defensive one, which was that rebellion. Uh, we had one feast. That was the only activity that we threw. We got a bunch of money here. Uh, so we had, you know, I think Gerard the first had a good chunk of money, and then of course his son had money as well, and ten to five activities. So of course all our titles have gone to our son, our second son, and we're gonna want to pause this here. And it looks like our <laughs> we had a son born right as we died. Wow. So now it's up to our new character, our former character's son, to name him, and I think we'd name him William. You know, after our father's good friend, Duke William the Bastard. I think that makes sense. So yeah, may you grow strong and wise, young William. All right, so uh, he'll have to take care of his younger brother now, which he's very handsome. He got that from his mother. So he's a good looking kid. And of course we have our own son, Gerard. So he was able to successfully have a son. And so now our dynasty is looking a little bit far, uh, stronger with two males just recently born here. All right, we got a new bishop as well. He's currently endorsing us. Uh, so we got a lot of things to do now that we're playing as uh, a new character here. And he's already quite stressed out too. Probably the death of his father played a role in that. But yeah, already having some some stress issues. I think he probably just did have the stress overload and got the athletic. And so we might be able to work off some stress here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, friendly competition. So this is with one of our knights here. I'm in the middle of my training when I spot Adrian also exercising. I look him up and down. Not only does he appear to be in good health, but also peak physical fitness. I'd love to measure my prowess against his, but in what way? Should I take multiple factors into account if I wish to win? Raw strength or a mix that can include stamina or wits? So, you know, our our traits, remember, we're honest, trusting, and brave. So yeah, we're going to have to always tell the truth now. We value truth and sincerity. I think uh, in that last playthrough, we didn't play as an honest character. It's been a while since we played as, as an honest character. Trusting, we're quick to place faith in others. And we're also brave. Regardless of the challenges or danger, we fear nothing. We're a skilled tactician. And then we already saw the, the two commander traits that we have there. Uh, also, the modifiers that we have here. It's looking at these. So you know where we're at. Remember, he attended that one tourney. Clearly, he didn't do very well because he didn't get the Hassel Looter trade. So be on the, the hunt for more tournaments that might be happening since we're a uh, very good prowess here. We got that 16 prowess. Not bad. Uh, our diplomacy is 11. So also, all right. So we're getting a bonus there from, from our spouse. Let's take a look at what job we have her doing. Seems like it's the one that gives you a, a bonus to everything. So I'm not sure if that's what she's best at. We'll just have to check. We have the 16 marshal. Nine stewardship, two intrigue, terrible, not surprising as an honest, trusting guy, we would not be very good at intrigue, and uh, poor learning as well, not fantastic in that area, so really just martial, that's all we're particularly good at. But yeah, we can suggest the two of us wrestle, so I think we overpower him by sheer prowess, could get a friendship with him, we could challenge him to a spar match, and this is a mix of prowess and martial, let me just take a look and... Look at this character. Uh, his prowess is better than ours. His marshal's not, though. Or how about a foot race? And so this is prowess and health. Let's challenge him to a sparring match. I think that makes sense. And we emerge victorious. Excellent. And closer to forming a friendship with him. Okay, so again, a lot of things we have to take care of here. Let's start with the lifestyle, which will be going down the marshal. And I think we're probably going to pick something else than uh, strategy focus. That's what our father was doing. I think it's a very this is a very chivalric character, right? As an honest, trusting guy, brave. Yeah, I think chivalry is what we'd go for. So that'll increase prowess rather than the martial attraction opinion, and and it does give us that battle advantage as well. And you can see he's already going down the gallant, which makes perfect sense for this character. Uh, so that's giving us the increased prowess as well, reducing the risk of commanding armies. And uh, he's already got the chivalric dominance too for the night effectiveness and accolade lurry gain. 
All right, excellent. So I feel like he's going down uh, the perfect route here. So we need to appoint all our council first. Let me just take a look and see if this is what we want her to do. Uh, it's a total of looks like we're getting the six points across these different skills. So you could just do the diplomacy. But yeah, I think it's best to do the assist ruler. Manage domain, you could do that. Try and be able to hold one more uh, county because you, you notice we do uh, have to give out some counties here now. Because we're, whoops. We're ruling too many now at this point. Uh, so our current bishop is, is terrible. He does support us though. So there's that. But uh, you do have to to sway him to get the full support here. So let's go and start on that. I don't know why I closed that. We still gotta get all these positions elected. So our four powerful uh, nobles here might have changed up. Yeah, it looks like they're they're different. And they're very diplomacy-minded characters. We have two that would be good at diplomacy. Okay. And then you got, uh, you know, Conrad's clearly the best at stewardship, but he's good at entry too. Hmm. I guess you could put Prince Bishop here. Uh, Prince Bishop Udo for the entry. That's what he was doing for our father. So yeah, we'll go ahead and place him in that position. And then our steward will be Count Conrad. And then you got two characters that are good at the Chancellor position. So I suppose you could go with the best one, but you should consider the Marshal. Because you're going to have a crappy marshal regardless, guys. Since, of course, we were our father's marshal. So let's go with the, the better marshal. Slightly better, anyway. And have him do this position. As far as their roles here, we need to continue to increase control. I don't think we ever finished that just yet. Let me just take a look here. Uh, control is at 100 there. So let me see if there's anywhere we don't have 100 control. Yeah, there's going to be a couple places, but you know what? We're going to grant some of this out here. So you might not need to, to do anything. As far as which one we're going to grant out, and it might just be these two here, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. We're going to grant these two out to somebody. So we don't need to increase control then. Uh, so we can just do the train commanders, I suppose. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll just continue to have Spy Master disrupting schemes. And does that mean that we. Oh, wow. That means we didn't complete this. Oh, oh, it finished. I just didn't see the notification for it. So that is Franconian. All right, excellent. I was about to say, <laughs> if we didn't complete that after all that work, yeah, I just must have missed the notification for it. All right, so that's excellent. I think we need to start working on development now, guys. So let's go ahead and work on the development in the capital here. It's a bummer that our father never did take that decision that he could have done. Because uh, that option is not available to us. Uh, we can pay homage. Which we probably should do. Now that we're in our, our new position. So we want to go pay homage to him. We also need to spend this money here. But unfortunately we're going to have to do all that next episode. Because this is the end of this one. Uh, so yeah, we're playing it as a new character. Gerard II. Uh, since our... Uh, Eldest son as a previous character, he died before he was able to take over. And I think that might have been what, what killed our last character. It seems like he just never really fully recovered from the death of his son. And, you know, he had uh, his friend die right after that, or maybe right before that. Yeah, a lot of loss in his life. I feel like he just couldn't recover from it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.